What are you most worried about for tomorrow? I don't know, I'm just worried about the haters. There are a lot of people that are helping us so we can be effective tomorrow. I'm extremely grateful for that. I'm gonna make some coffee, I'm gonna throw some stuff in my bag. I feel really like unprepared. Bye buddy. I haven't talked to somebody who's like been against me. So that's why I'm like kind of nervous. There's a part of me that wants to be like, why are we even doing this? They're not gonna listen. But then there's a part of me that's like, absolutely, we have to like do it anyway. We wanna be first in line. So is that the front door or is that the front door? There's four front doors. There's four front doors. Too early. So this is a first. It's only 606. Let's get registered. Register to testify. I don't see our bill. I know you're tired. Hi. It's fucking terrifying. You know what I'm saying? Like to, to be trans in America right now is terrifying. I mean, we were lucky in that she transitioned so many years ago that like, it was before it was in the news. There wasn't all this negative pushback. And now it's just like, okay, well, she's lived like almost seven years as herself and been affirmed and happy. And, and the state is just ruining everything for her now. Yeah. Come on, wake up. legislative session is happening. I think about it a lot, like at school, even when I'm trying to hang out with my friends, I just think about it and it, it really affects my life a lot. My first favorite thing to do is swimming. My second favorite thing to do is writing. My third is singing. From the time Maya could talk, she was telling us who she was. We just didn't understand. We did all sorts of different tests, saw different experts. I mean, everything from an endocrinologist to a neurologist to a, you know, psychologist. But after we affirmed Maya, it was the first time we ever saw her really smile. A whole new girl, a whole new child, just happy as can be. Cameron's here too, he's just not here yet. Um, we got in really late, and so he's just not he's just in the mood yet. So I'm pretty much a mama's boy. I'll say it. I am. Thought it would be easier than it is. Didn't know I was gonna have a trans kid. Didn't even know that was, you know, even a possibility it wasn't even on my radar. You're about to be 18, kid. You're a big kid now. I make music, play a lot of video games, you know, normal teenage stuff. I'm just trying to make it, like, through school. I always knew something was off, but I was like, because like when I was younger, I didn't even know that being trans was like an option or a thing you could do. Growing up as a trans kid is just like any other person. You make friends, you learn, you play, you get hurt. I can tell you right now, I wanted to have a son so badly. And I was so excited, I was so ready to do a good job. She was four and she was very upset. She like pointed at me, she's like, why did you make me a boy? You should have made me a girl, I was meant to be a girl. I have old school Southern Baptist things in my mind. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what was right. My son was not gonna be my son anymore. 
So do I say goodbye to the person before? Like, that's huge. I promise you it was not easy. It still is not easy. One second, sir. Being trans is part of who I am, but it doesn't really have anything to do with who I am. I knew that I wanted my kids to have a different experience than I grew up, but I was not prepared for how much work having kids is. I got your leg. When I first testified, I wrote my speech on a piece of yellow construction paper with like a purple crayon. Me and my family had absolutely no idea what we were getting ourselves into. We thought, maybe they've just never met a trans kid before. Maybe they have no idea what they're doing. We thought we would just show up. And, and educate them and then... Okay, and then it'll be fine. be like, all right, yeah. yes. I mean, we didn't know what we were walking into. I can't believe this. In Texas, really? We're going to let our yeah. children be mutilated? Texas has sort of been ground zero for anti-trans rhetoric and legislation. We started going to the Capitol in 2017 when the bathroom bill happened. I don't want an eight-year-old granddaughter walking into a bathroom with a 30-year-old man there. Trying to humanize it and make them realize, like, this is a little girl, not what you imagine. And we were able to push back against that bill and defeat it. Major outrage in Texas today after the state attorney general, Ken Paxton, likened kids getting gender-affirming medical care to child abuse. The first time I went to the Capitol, I was eight years old. One of the bills that we fought was a child abuse bill. It felt unsafe because people were yelling at us, calling us just horrible names. I don't need a to tell me anything. It just keeps getting worse. It didn't really feel like we had a choice. We have to at least go try. You can't mentally prepare for ledge. <laughs> like it's just, it's like preparing to get punched in the face. During the legislative session, it's nonstop. Rachel is on her phone from the moment she wakes up. Late nights, almost no sleep. This session has been like, we have two hearings on Monday and two hearings on Tuesday. I think that was their strategy. Let's just file such an overwhelming amount of legislation that we're guaranteed to get something through. It was really a matter of prioritizing the bills that would cause the most harm. The chair lays out House Bill 1686 and recognizes Representative Alverson to explain the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. House Bill 1686 addresses a prohibition on the medical and surgical treatment in children for the purposes of gender transitioning, gender reassignment, or gender dysphoria. House Bill 1686 and Senate Bill 14, which was a companion bill, both of those bills restrict access to medically necessary best practice, life-saving health care for transgender adolescents. Okay, begin. You're gonna hit public health. Did you guys do it? Yeah. You're good? When you have a piece of legislation that is being heard in committee, any citizen can go up to the Capitol and register their support or opposition for any piece of legislation. You can offer public testimony. It's supposed to be the way for legislators to take the temperature of what is the public opinion on this issue. I highly recommend not sitting in the room until your name is called. If you listen to what the other people are saying, it's really painful. Before any of the public testimony, there's also invited testimony experts who come in to speak on both sides. Chair calls Quentin Van Meter. There's a danger in giving the child pronouns and letting them dress and act in the manner of the opposite sex gives that child a sense Maya, of... don't listen to what they're saying. I know you do the medical side, but when I look at this, that it's child abuse. Do you look at it that way at all? I look at it as doing harm to the child. Representative Johnson. Thank you, Chairwoman. Oh, here's Ann. Just yes. Your expertise and you are the same Dr. Quentin Van Meter who around 2020 
was actually rejected by Texas court of whether or not you were an expert in puberty blockers, correct? I was rejected, but there was a very complex circumstance with it. We know there are big organizations like the Alliance Defending Freedom, like the Heritage Foundation, um, Focus on the Family. They're organizations that have millions and millions of dollars, and they have spent millions and millions of dollars refining their messaging. So some of the phrases that we hear at the Capitol, like chemical castration. To perform castration for the purpose of transitioning a child. And genital mutilation. My commitment is to stop allowing the mutilation and gender modification of children. Is very carefully manufactured to get that sort of like jolt reaction from people. We were 100% willing to say, make this a surgery ban. I'm so glad y'all are here. It's gonna be a long night, so take care of yourselves, get rest. Thank you. Get a fresh sunshine if you need to. Okay, and you know how many invited speakers there are? We have t a total of 10, so we have eight and a half more to go. Okay. There is not a time limit on those folks. And then after that, we go to the two minute section, and we have more than 400 signed up. My name is Dr. Jessica Zwiener. I'm representing myself. I am opposed to this bill. I'd like to ask you the same thing I asked the other doctor. What's a woman? It sounds like an easy question, but it's a complicated question. My four-year-old son can tell you what a man and a woman is, and so can my six-year-old daughter. Yet you're a medical professional telling me it's complicated. The state of Texas cannot rely on its own doctors to regulate themselves in this area of medicine. It says that you're a fellow with the Manhattan Institute. Correct. No. Uh, do you live in Texas? I do not. They brought in folks who were not even Texans from all over the country to essentially create a narrative that's not true. Someone has to do something to put an end to the continuing horrors of pediatric gender medicine. Would you say that some or all of the mental health professionals are assisting or pushing the transition? Yes. I see what you mean about not listening to it, because it's just it's the last 30 years. so disturbing. It's a real pleasure. Politically, I just can't believe this is how this group of people would choose to spend their time. Shielding hate in the, you know, in the guise of child protection. Give me a break. It is not, you're not protecting children. You're coming after a group of people. I think it's really obvious that there's just a significant gap of knowledge. Most people don't know what it means to be or to raise a transgender kid. So it's really easy for people who are using our kids in their political games to just make up rhetoric that's not true. Totally normal stuff here. Can't get a tattoo till you're 18, but go to the doctor and chop your testicles off. It's liberal. Always that anticipation, like, how crazy are people going to get? And how much are they going to target my family? good time for you to practice your testimony again. I'd like for you to stand up and do it for everyone. Yeah, I want Sonia to do hers too. Hi, my name is Maya Stanton. I always questioned, why did God put me in the wrong body? I tried to tell my parents, but they didn't understand for a long time. Here I am again, missing school to sit all day in the Capitol to try to convince you I'm a human who deserves the same rights as every other Texan, the right to a happy life. And I'm always happy, except when I have to come here. It is not the place of our government to dictate medical policy. We have the right to decide what is best for our children, and we deserve privacy when making those decisions. 
These days at the Capitol are brutal. They're marathons. It's a really long, stressful day. So are they going to stop talking about this one person? They've been talking for like an hour. There are 470 people that registered to testify, and we've only gotten through 19. We have 451 more people that want to testify on this bill before we can get out here at midnight. And there are 92 for this bill, and there are 2,702 people against it. And might just not let me go after waiting over 15 hours. You think, God, we just wasted a day of PTO and a day of missing school, and we may not even actually get to speak. They essentially had it so that you heard from one person who was supporting the bill, and then you heard from someone who was against the bill. And it made it seem like it was more even. I'm so furious because I've been here, and along with two or three other parents, we have, our families are the most harmed by all of this legislation, and we are not being heard from them. And we were here before some of the people were not speaking. We were here on the grounds, the very first people here at 5.45 a.m., and we have yet to be called. At some point I was just exhausted and was like, they're never gonna call us, and this is really unfair. Until they seemingly ran out of people that were for the bill. The chair will call Cameron Wright. Well, good evening, members of the committee. Thank you for hearing my testimony. My name is Cameron Wright, and I am a 17-year-old from Denton, Texas, here in opposition of HB 1686. <clears throat> I love my friends, and I love my family. I love music and writing songs. I wanted to come here today to hopefully show you all that even though I am trans, I am just a regular kid, and I deserve to access to health care. Please vote against HB 18 1686. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Why do you spend so much time thinking about whether I'm really a girl? Why do you think you know me better than I know myself? I've been me my whole life. If you pass this bill, I'll have to leave my home. I don't want to leave Texas. And I should be in school, learning history, not making it. Thank you so much. I know you don't understand what it's like to be trans, and that's okay, you don't have to. You just have to listen to us when we tell you who we are. This is my body, this is my future. You shouldn't have any right to tell me how I can live or what I can do with my own body. These laws do not help anyone, they only hurt kids like me. Please mind your business and vote no on this bill so I can continue to be who I am. Thank you, Maya. Mom! Mom! Trust and believe that you are making history. You too, Brock. Thanks. Thanks. Can I have to go to school tomorrow? Yeah. Yes, you have to go to school tomorrow. We're going. Uh, members, per our committee posting, we are now going to close public testimony. It's absolutely embarrassing. It is ridiculous. We had close to 3,000 people register in opposition to the bill, and they had less than 100 register for the bill. It's just not fair that we have to keep coming back here. insane of them to push this piece of legislation through when there is this much opposition to it. I didn't go to testify because it's really stressful. It's like a very soul-crushing experience. They like call your name, you go up there, say your testimony, like thinking, that you've made an impact, and then they just pass the bill. It's a lot to deal with right now. Also with school, I just needed a break. Start this morning.
The day that we went to the Capitol brought out like a rage because I feel like people think I want this life. If I could go back in time and be born as a little boy, my life would be 10 times easier and I'd be 10 times happier. I'm not saying being trans is a bad thing, but this life is hard. As I grew up, I kind of started to accept myself more, but it took a long time to even get to that point. It took like till last year to even like fully like myself. I check the 2023 legislative session bill tracker at least once a day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Between drag bans, book bans, this crazy bill about replacing school counselors with chaplains, obviously banning healthcare for transgender adolescents. 46, 47, 48. 48 bills proposed that specifically target healthcare access for transgender kids. I'm just curious if anything's been released on the calendar. Okay, second readings, let's see. I don't see anything. We keep checking, like, when is something being scheduled for a reading? When is there gonna be debate on the floor? Just trying to track that and be prepared. It, you know, if I knew it was coming up, I could take off earlier. The two bills of most concern to us right now are HB 1686 and SB 14, and those are the, the two healthcare bans that are most likely to move out of committee. HB 1686 and SB 14 are what we call companion bills. SB 14 is Senate, HB 1686 is House. They're the exact same bill. I think it's the same exact language. And they do that a lot because it's like if they can't get it out of the Senate, but they can get it in, out of the House. There were so many issues with 1686, especially seeing how many folks turned out uh, to oppose it, that they might be hesitant to push forward with that and instead move with SB 14. We're going. going. We're doing it. Today we're at the Texas Capitol once again. They have advanced SB 14 and it's scheduled for debate on the House floor. Which way is the Speaker's office? You know, we've been doing this for so long and it's been incredibly draining for our kids and it's not safe. Okay, y'all can go to the House. Alright, Speaker, number two, public turn back. How do we get to we're um, parents of trans kids, and so we were hoping to meet with the speaker. Okay. She's so confused. Should we just wait and see if the speaker has availability? We have sessions today. It's going to be pretty late. Well, that's why we're here. So that's why we're trying to get here before it started. To get in. Have y'all tried going to the gallery? Um, well, we will when it starts, but um, we were hoping to speak with the speaker. He is a very busy man. He, I mean, we're prepping for a session right now, so he's he's got all his stuff going on. All session, we've been trying to get meetings to speak with Speaker Phelan. This is somebody who has the power to stop this, and we haven't been given access. There's Ann Johnson. Hey guys. Hi. I actually need a favor from y'all. Yeah. I know you're a fifth generation Texan. Mm -hmm. What? Tell me about your businesses or what you will have to leave behind if you leave Texas. Anything that y'all think of that my colleagues would say, oh, me too. There's an old saying that it's hard to pass a bill, but there are a thousand ways to kill a bill. We are going to use every tool in our toolbox to try to stop this legislation. While we have folks in the gallery that are supporting LGBTQ and trans individuals, there are also people that are wearing these red shirts saying that they're here to fight child gender mutilation. And that's completely false. I mean, it's just this rogue amount of complete misinformation and disinformation. The chair lays out on second reading, SB 14. The clerk will read the bill. Mr. Speaker, I raise a point of order against further consideration of Senate Bill 14 when the grounds of the bill analysis is inaccurate and misleading. 
Please bring your point of order down front. A point of order is any kind of error or discrepancy in the bill, the spelling mistake, the error in the record. The point of order can be sustained, which means the parliamentarian is saying this it has to be fixed legally in order for the legislation to move forward, or it can be withdrawn, essentially saying it's not a real issue. The point of orders buy us more time because then the bill has to get sent back to committee, it has to be corrected, and then it has to be rescheduled to go back to the House floor. Your goal is to just make it until ledge ends without the bill having advanced. If you can keep sending it back, you can kill it. The chair advises our guests that under the rules of the House, demonstrations or outbursts by visitors in the gallery are strictly prohibited. Pursuant to the House Constitutional Authority to prevent obstruction of proceedings, the chair orders the Sergeant of Arms to clear the gallery. The House will stay in ease until the gallery is cleared. It looks like the parliamentarians are going to sustain a point of order. So it does give us time to regroup and look at amendments and hold it up as long as we can. When you've got Dan Patrick and Greg Abbott signaling, hey, these are priority issues, it really puts the pressure for more moderate Republicans to prioritize those issues too, even if they don't believe in it. The House Committee on Public Health will come to order. The chair moves that SB 14, as substituted, be reported to the full house and that it do pass and print it the clerk will call the roll. Clip? Aye. Compass? No. Collier? No. Jaton? Aye. Johnson? No. Jones of Harris? No. Jones of Dallas? No. Oliverson? Aye. Price? Aye. Smith? Aye. Tenderholt? Yes. There being six ayes and five nays, the motion prevails. Uh, is there, if there's no further business, the House Committee on Public Health stands adjourned, subject to the call of the chair. I feel like I'm on another planet right now. None of this feels like real. I have a work call and I'm like still kind of shaking and emotional from what happened and just kind of have to pull my act together and put on a professional face and act like I didn't just experience this like insane traumatic death. They've silenced us again, but we will not be silent in peace. Yeah. How dare they stop our voice in our house? Yeah. Yeah. What do we want? Trans rights. What do we want it? No. What do we want? Trans rights. What do we want it? No. There's nothing wrong with these kids. 
There's something wrong, deeply wrong with this state, with this legislature, with these politicians, not these kids. I just texted everybody the link. <laughs> I was talking to my friend about all the anti-trans legislation and we thought that it would be cool to have a rally that's just completely led by trans kids on like Capitol Hill. Hi. And then we were like, we should do like a trans prom. It gave Libby a focus through the entire session to put her efforts into something that was happy and joyful and productive instead of sitting idly by watching her rights just be rapidly stripped away. Obviously, I'm not going to allow a physician to remove my daughter's health care. That will force us out of the state. We're happy here. Our kids are happy here. I don't want to leave. Honestly, it feels really overwhelming. My kids are fifth generation Texans. We go back at least four generations. So I'm a seventh generation Texan. I'm a fourth generation Texan. I was born here, I, I, I love, this, love the state. My mom's dad was a state representative. It, it's tougher to call myself a Texan now. Okay, the only way you can have the sleepover is if everyone goes to sleep by midnight, okay? We've actively been looking at where we can move and, you know, it would be financially devastating for us to do so. I have all my friends here, my family, to restart in a new state because of all these laws. It's really scary. I love my neighbors, my neighborhood, my community, my friends, and I don't want to leave them, and I don't want to leave my home, but I don't want to deal with this anymore. It takes up all your mental space. You realize like more and more you're just not living. You're surviving. I don't know what would happen to someone who couldn't afford to leave. It's already such a tough journey and they don't seem to understand that. I mean, yes, there is joy and yes, there is beauty in it. Of course there is, but it's a hard, it's a hard path. And this just makes it so much worse and so much harder unnecessarily so. Sunny, your food's ready if you want to come sit down. For sun and rain, for grass and grain, for our loving things to earth we give, blessings on our meal and our family and our friends, both near and far away. Bon, bon appetit, now you may eat. Something smells like feet. All right. If we have to leave, where do we go? I mean, it will be a hard and heavy thing to do, but you know, we can't control the outcome. All we can do is react to what will be best for our family. When the session is on, I can't not go. If it passes and I went, then I did what I could. But if I don't go and it passes, I'm gonna regret it, you know, for the rest of my life that I didn't, I didn't at least try. The chair welcomes our visitors in the gallery today and advises our guests that the rules of the house strictly prohibit demonstrations or outbursts in the gallery. Every time you put your life on hold to pack up the car to drive to Austin, you're prioritizing fighting this above everything else in your life. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Moody, for what purpose? I raise a point of order against further consideration of committee substitute Senate Bill 14. It's just so stressful, both financially and mentally. I worry that I'm not there to protect them if something does happen. You know, Austin's pretty far, and then when it's over with, it's usually midnight or one o'clock. They're somehow trying to find the energy to drive all the way back. We're not sleeping. Things around the house aren't getting done. It puts our marriage at stress. But kids are still doing all the things that kids need to do. The chair recognizes Ms. Click for a motion. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House grant permission for the Committee on Public Health to meet while the House is in session today at 5 p.m. I know that like holding this bill up, like there's some thought in terms of bills that come after and you know, everything's maneuvers, mm -hmm. but do we think like, is there any chance of stopping anything? At yeah, this or, or like amendments at this point, or is this dragging out? Like, let, let me ask y'all know my, our amendment, right? Two independent medical professionals, two independent mental health professionals, mm -hmm. and then even creating and allowing a commission 
of um, impartial professionals to determine and keep up with standard of care and best practice. Sure. And y'all would jump through those hoops, right? A hundred percent. Just so you could stay in Texas. I don't think Texas. we should have to, but yeah. I don't either. Then we could stay in Texas and no. our lives wouldn't be disrupted. Yeah. If this bill makes it passed and stays on the floor, I will offer that amendment. So SB 14 has been brought back on the floor a third time. Procedurally, there's been a successful uh, strategic defense to try to keep the bill from coming up, but we are at a point where we're running out of those tools. There is a group of folks that feel like they just have to pass this. Would the gentleman yield for questions? Would the gentleman yield for questions? Yes. This is essentially a mental health condition, correct? It is. And we have other examples in history when we have made poor decisions about doing surgical procedures on people to treat mental illnesses. That's right. I think the example that most people would recognize is lobotomy for the treatment of schizophrenia or severe depression. It felt insane to sit in that room and look around like, do you hear what he's saying? Ms. Johnson, for what purpose? Will the gentleman yield for questions? The gentleman yield for questions. Yes. The gentleman yields. Thank you, Dr. Oliverson. Tell me what year you banned lobotomies in Texas. I'm not advised representative. Because you haven't done it. It's not illegal. And that's all we're asking. For decades, don't ban there were people because in you mental haven't banned anybody other that were unable than this to even recognize who they were Texas. or where they were. As session progressed, it just became clearer and clearer that we weren't going to be able to stop it. I just was praying that they would listen to some of the amendments that were being laid out, which would have mitigated a lot of the harm that this bill is, is doing. The chair recognized Ms. Johnson of Harris to explain the amendment. If you pass this bill as is, you're going to crush these parents. This amendment keeps the entire surgical ban in place, and it keeps the vast majority of the ban in place, except in the rare severe circumstance where you have two medical professionals, two mental health professionals, in conjunction with the parents and the pediatrician, and the oversight of an impartial state agency determining that this care is necessary rather than a complete and total ban, which will result in harm to these kids. That amendment accomplishes what they say is their reason for doing this bill. It's, it's really creating an extreme amount of oversight, but they don't care. Respectfully, I'm gonna oppose this amendment. I do not have confidence in these doctors' ability to accurately diagnose gender dysphoria. Ms. Johnson of Harrison's I'm an amendment. The amendment is not acceptable to the author. It's a record vote. The clerk will ring the bell. Show Dr. Oliverson voting nay. Show Ms. Click voting nay. There being 58 ayes, 81 nays, the amendment fails to adopt. That's a crazy amendment to still not accept. There was nothing that they were willing to negotiate. The legislation left off emancipated minors. 56 eyes, 81 nays, the amendment fails to adopt. The following amendment. This amendment doesn't fix all the problems of this bill, but it shows some compassion. 56 eyes, 81 nays, the amendment fails to adopt. Suddenly stopping any medication can have catastrophic side effects. There being 56 eyes, 82 nays, the amendment fails to adopt. This particular amendment would 57 eyes, 80 nays, the amendment fails to adopt. The amendment fails to, be adopted. fails to be adopted. All the amendments that could have given us a little breathing room were shot down. The chair recognizes Dr. Oliverson to close on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members, and I close. The question occurs passes the third reading, SB 1-4. This is a record vote. The clerk bring the bill. I have no doubt that this is politically motivated. I have no doubt people will come out of the shadows and talk about this being orchestrated for election purposes. Have all members voted. We're not dealing with Texas problems. We're dealing with politics. There being 92 hours and 48 days, SB 1-4 is passed the third reading. Hey, Maya, your RBG cost? Yes, and heat. Heat. Okay. RBG slaves. We're trying to sort stuff and donate them because we're moving. 
we just can't give the, the care that Maya needs being here. The law hasn't even gone into effect and our provider has, has already stopped care. They just abandoned us. And that was for me, that was it. I said, we're done here. I told my friends so I'm moving. I can't enjoy life right now because of this. Once I move, I'm not gonna have to like go to hospital, but there'll still be a lot of stuff I have to worry about, like getting a new doctor, finding a new house, getting new friends, going to school. I'm still processing it. I think it, it'll, I'll be processing it until we actually are out of here. First one to get three wins, first one wins. Sunny, one day she will need this type of health care. This bill, there are no loopholes. We can't get care for our child in our state. After 2024, there may not be any safe states. We don't know what's gonna happen. We might have to find a safe country. I try to stop thinking about it. I'm glad that my family supports me. Oh my God, you're adorable. My baby. I have some relief that he turned 18, but I don't think we're out of the woods at all. I didn't think I would like make it, but I did. If someone went through what I went through without care, I don't know how that would end. Make some noise for our trans kids, y'all. These last months, and especially the last weeks, have been, I don't even know what the word is. Beatdown doesn't even feel like it's a harsh enough word. I know that I'm only 13 years old, but even I know that there are a few things that aren't up for debate. The fact that we exist, that gender-affirming healthcare has saved our lives and allowed us to thrive, the fact that our presence in the world does nothing to threaten others. Yeah. Our joy is ours, and today and every day, we celebrate, grow, and embrace it. Together, we will build an even better and more beautiful world for us all.